Okay, I think we're good to start. Again, a pleasant afternoon to everyone. Hope everyone is staying safe. And um, for this afternoon, for our GIS Conversations webinar, we will be having um, Virgil Yu as our speaker, and we will be talking about empowering our organization with indoor facilities management. He is one of our geo special specialists from the solutions team. Virgil has been actively involved in the design and delivery of GIS powered location analytic solutions focused on addressing specific business values in the commercial and corporate landscape. Virgil graduated with a bachelor's degree in business administration, specializing in accounting and management information systems, as well as a master's degree in applied business data analytics from Boston University in Massachusetts in the United States. His background in public accounting, coupled with big data trainings, enabled him to tailor and design GIS solutions with a specific focus on value-driven data analytics for the commercial market clientele. And as I have mentioned earlier, we will be talking about how, um, several ways on how we can empower your organizations with indoor facilities management. By the way, my name is Sarah, and as always, I will be your host and moderator for this um, day's GIS Conversations webinar series. So with that, we invite you to ask questions as we go through the presentation because we will have um, a time, we will reserve a time to address those questions at the end of our webinar. So without further ado, let me turn over the floor to Virgil. Virgil? Thank you, Zara, for the introduction. And a warm welcome to everyone again for taking your time out this afternoon to join this webinar. Uh, again, my name is Virgil. Um, today, I would like to give you a presentation on tell you a story on how indoor facilities management using indoor GIS can help you improve your workflows in uh, facilities management across uh, a few different industries. So to start off, I'd like to um, give you some of the um, background re related to just connected devices in general. So today, uh, everything is becoming smart. I mean, everyone, every one of us is using a smartphone to you know, place orders and to order food and do many things. And then every time we record data, there's a, every time we transmit data, there's almost always a location element to it. So when this applies to the indoor workspace and indoor facilities management in general, um, it can create tremendous opportunities for you to leverage this, all this digital information to drive better actions in facilities management. So as a matter of fact, based on a study conducted by Gartner a survey, um, a lot, um, the sampled enterprises and corporate offices report that um, they two thirds of them will start to use some sort of indoor analytics or indoor planning to, to boost the productivity of their um, works, workforces in the office. And that figure is up you know, from 10% since last year and expected to grow to two thirds by year 2022, which is um, two years from now. And from a uh, facilities management and cost control perspective, we also, uh, Gartner's report also, also shows that more than 90% of the reported overhead related to operating expense, uh, related to operations, related to human resources, it's actually arise actually arises from in uh, inefficient management of indoor spaces. So, as some of you some of you um, from manufacturing or retail industries knows that overhead is a very big issue in the production and manufacturing process. But then it's often overlooked when we bring this matter into um, into analysis of uh, productivity productivities within the offices. So with these two you know, trends um, covered, um, I, I'd also, I also like to point out that um, by the year 2027, there will be around you know, 27 billion connected devices around the world. And those are smart devices, connected cars, sensors, and all that. And they basically, connected devices will drive, you know, will drive a major part in every aspect of urban fabric. And as we know that in highly urbanized, city, highly urbanized cities like Singapore, most of our daily activities happens within buildings. And so how we build the buildings to make them smart and geo-enable them 
to be able to leverage all this information becomes a challenge. And then um, companies who can successfully leverage those data will really have a competitive edge over, um, over other workspaces. And hopefully today with some of the information we, we, uh, we prepare for you, you can have an idea um, of how that works out. So just to start, I mean, since we're talking to you today as you know, facilities managers, both uh, owned by the organization or as a contractor, we understand that your daily activities include supervise the operations of um, very big cam corporate campuses or manufacturing plants or any kind of facilities you manage. And you are responsible for the maintenance and work orders to keep the building up and running without major disruptions. And also, you also need to collaborate with um, other stakeholders within the entire build environment, uh, work, um, the build environment lifecycle, such as consultants, architects, and contractors. And that you are responsible for some of the key metrics, such as sustain sustainability uh, scores, uh, energy usage, managing the total cost of uh, minimizing the total cost of ownership to keep the building running, and then also helps play a part in uh, the ongoing redevelop, the ongoing redevelop, redevelopment, redesign, and necessary, you know, cons uh, improvement that needs to that needs to be made, that needs to be built made to the building after the construction is finished. So to bring so so to uh, better illustrate this, um, uh, we uh, we understand that facilities management is a key component in the life cycle of build environment, and then the data flows from you know so we start with the same data either a CAD drawing or a building information model during the conceptualization phases of the buildings. And then the same data that get passed from the design phase to visualize to 3D visualization during the procure uh, during the construction. And then the same data actually can be used to be to be used as a, as the foundation to perform facilities management in the sense that you will be able to use the same design documents with the same asset labels as well as the planned location of the assets, and then use them as the, as the basis to do space management as well as asset maintenance. So later on, we will show you some. Uh, we will show you a dynamic demo as well as some of the visuals to help you, help you better understand how powerful using you know indoor maps to host all this information can enable your organizations. So just to recap. Um, so for those of you who attended the previous series, you might have uh, you uh, you might have learned about how you know ArcGIS or you know GIS in general can uh, play a tremendous part in operationalizing 3D data and then increase the uh, dramatically reduce the processing time of 3D 3D data into building models. So today we want to focus more on the operations maintenance and space management side of the you know of the life cycle. So um to in summary um arcgis platform is provides you with an end-to-end -end solution that be, that will be able to take care of this whole process um and during and then by being able to do this within one single platform the advantage here is really that you will be able to retain the data integrity um because everything is working from the same initial you know, cat drawing the design concept and then there's really so it, it's uh it's also better for you to communicate between um, different stakeholders within the within the value chain, meaning that um, when you are coordinating with your contractor to do cleaning, repairs, or maintenance, rest assured you'll be able to understand. You'll be able to um, have the reassurance that they are looking at the same floor plan and then they're operating with the same kind of knowledge. And <clears throat> we want to basically drill down. The, uh, the workflow that we have, all the capabilities of ArcGIS indoors, which is the product that we uh, we are sharing with you, into five main broad aspects. So basically, um, mainly related to space management, which is to boost staff uh, occupants' productivity, and asset management, which is to help you keep your total cost of ownership of the building down, and as well as dramatically reducing your operating overhead related to um, Related to um, asset maintenance, in a, in a way that um, we are able to, you'll be able to preemptively perform your asset management, management workflows instead of following a fixed schedule or 
in a very reactive manner when something breaks down. So by using an indoor map with all of the asset with all of the asset you know uh, maintenance history enabled, you will be able to actually we will see you will see more of this later on the uh, on the demo. But um, in summary, you will be able to have a comprehensive and accurate layout of facilities and systems, and uh, with you know documents and artifacts of inventory and facilities within the infrastructure. Of course, other things. Um, other other things that we can do will also be it also makes makes it easier for you to submit compliance documents. For example, energy consumption based on floor or occupants, uh, water usage, and all of that. So from here on, we'd like to um, focus on three key industries today to keep them uh, to keep them uh, to keep the scope a little bit more clear. Um, so indoor location platform applies to basically every industry that's not listed here, what you are seeing in front of you. But mainly, but but uh, for hospitals, workspace, campuses, and manufacturing facilities, facilities is where we've seen, um, is, is the kind of uh, facilities that we've seen the most value realized from leveraging indoor location technology. So for just through a few examples here for hospital, uh, you will be able to enable tracking of people and very mission uh, critical medical equipment so that you will be able to, uh, for example, understand um, to be better, better get better keep track of vulnerable individuals such as infants, elderly, and uh, people that's in critical conditions so that you understand where they are within the building. And then you'll be also you'll also be able to understand the distribution of your staff and then to ensure that every you know patient uh, has at least some uh, nurses and doctors nearby to take care of them when a need arises um, and there will be also uh, they can also use wayfinding tools to navigate to um, medical equipments when when there is an emergency situation for especially during you know the COVID times um, this, I would say, applies also to workspaces and campuses. So you'll see more about how we, um, how indoor technology can help in during this COVID situation to respond to social distancing as well. But for manufacturing facility, um, some of the use cases we've done before include uh, monitoring uh, the safety of the of the workers within the facility. For example, when they need to work in high altitude uh, high altitude situations. Uh, you will be able to, for example, receive an alert when they fall off based off using telematics data. And for workspaces and campuses, we have wayfinding, facilities booking, as well as some solutions for COVID-19 responses during this time. So yeah, again, to summarize, we um, today we want to walk you through two main aspects. Uh, number one is space management. Space management, so this is to deal with, this is uh, mainly related to visitors or your own staff to make them navigate the building faster and um, basically spend more time working and less time navigating around the building. So in this way, we uh, in this way you will be able to increase your revenue per square foot in your workspaces. And for um, offices, hospitals, manufacturing plants, um, you you will be also you will also be able to use um, the indoor technology to to address the second matter, which is asset manage management. So uh, as I was describing before, this is really mainly related to uh, preemptive, preemptive maintenance of assets and then making sure that you absolutely minimize the, uh, any disruption that may happen to, the, to, all the, to all your occupants within the building because of a, a, a unseen or um, because of an unseen incident or something that can be prevented otherwise. So just to, um, again, a few examples. I mean, so from here on, um, what you're seeing here is basically the, you know, our five main capabilities using indoor technologies to address space management and asset maintenance. So just a few examples here um, for workspaces, um, we can use geofencing to make sure that uh, all of your high risk and high value items such as um, servers, storage that contains IPs and very high value data inside, or even, you know, high value documents as well as uh, Basically, things that you want to be absolutely make sure that they don't stay, that they don't move outside of certain rooms or buildings. And uh, again, medical equipments uh, within hospitals where you know they needs to be in the place at all times, so you'll be able to track the static track the static location of those. 
And then for vulnerable individuals in the hospitals, you'll be able to, you know, set a narrow, narrower geofence um, area for them. So, um, and also tagging them. For example, one of the interesting use cases we have, um, we can do is um, tagging the infants as they were, after they were born, and then making sure that, you know, the, uh, the parents claim the right uh, infant instead of, because sometimes, um, sometimes when, um, when it's poorly managed, there are occasions where uh, the parents will take the wrong infant. And also for elderly people um, living in, uh, elderly people receiving care in the hospital, you can also um, use uh, tagging, uh, location tags and tracking devices to make sure they don't, uh, to receive an alert when you, when they uh, move off the confinement of where they're supposed to be. Uh, and again, manufacturing companies can use, you know, telematics technologies to, you know, get alerts when uh, people are near, uh, you know, hazards or there's a sudden unseen movement such as um, sudden drop and sudden falling. And space management specifically, so now we're going to drill down to the technology a little bit. So space management specifically in indoor GIS uh, is mainly to answer the, you know, uh, what if scenario planning, utilization, optimization of uh, not just the not just the staff, the human, but also all the uh, assets that's in the building to keep uh, that the that the staff need to use to navigate to uh, to be productive. So some of the you know examples here include uh, the staff that monitor current conditions and asset status. So facilities management, you will be able to monitor the current condition asset status. So uh, so that you'll be uh, so that you can make sure that um, uh, the equipment and all of the things that the the staff that, that your occupants or the staff that needs to do their work is always available. And if they are not, um, we will uh, you can have a uh, overview and a monitoring um, when they will be done, and then plan accordingly to communicate to the staff. Um, so specifically during this time. Uh, COVID during this COVID nineteen uh, times, um, the indoor location is also a very powerful tool to help you uh, keep track of social distancing within workspaces. So what you're seeing here is um, a three floor building laid out in three D format. So this is again directly enabled by uh, through three D uh, through uh, the BIM BIM building model as well as CAD, which contains the you know location of the rooms, the assets, and in this case specifically the buildings. So on the top, you hear on the top, you see the facility booking uh, capability that's a, that comes together that that comes together um, with the indoors platform uh, from ArcGIS, and then on the bottom, you will be able to, to actually. Uh, so on the bottom, what you're seeing here is we use um, a variety of different positioning, uh, indoor positioning data sources to be able to measure how many occupants is in you know specific areas of the room at the same time, and then. Um, also, the way that the work desk and common area is spaced, um, whether or not they are, compl they are complying to the one meter minimum distance between each of the staff that will be assigned there. So this will be so this tool, for example, can enable both you as the facility manager to better plan to ensure that all of the social distancing measures observed and um, to number one, uh, stay uh, stay compliant with building regulations and number two, uh, if I basically communicate all of these uh, with the tenant very fast so that you can send them reports based on um, real measurements of the build real measurements between the distance of buildings and then urge your uh, urge your occupants to take uh, quick actions. And for wayfinding, um, it's very simple and straightforward. We, uh, the application will basically use the pre-planned walking path between floors and buildings if it's a large campus um, to enable both the visitors as well as staff, um, the choice is yours, to navigate, around the, to navigate around the campus. So this can be done either on a mobile app or on a kiosk if you have one in you know, the concourse or the lobby of your building. Um, some of the other tools that we can use uh, is actually is uh, um, pre uh, using the historic you know, uh, movement of the people within the building, as you can see here, uh, the red dots representing every you know a point of stay that's that's uh, longer than a threshold you set. In this case, it's around five to ten minutes. 
So over time, for example, every week or every month, you'll be able to uh, visualize how much the the degree or level of activity of human movement that happens within you know each um, down to the level of each corridor or each room within your campus. So this information again can be used to um, can be used to uh, as planning tools to pl um, to do social distancing as well. So here we have a you know brief short video demo for you to um, illustrate how how all this coming up uh, uh, to illustrate how space management uh, applies. So what you're seeing here is the wayfinding tool. So um, this so basically what you're seeing here is um, the cat um, a building floor plan what we call a building what we call a ArcGIS indoor information model which is you know directly uh, engineered and transformed from the raw CAD uh, floor plan data that um, that you maintain yourself so do, so basic so really what you're seeing here is there's a minimal we are really taking the data directly from you or the uh, con or the developer directly to be able to, to ensure that um, you're working with the up-to-date floor plan, which all of, with all of the buildings, corridors, and the rooms map out up to date. So you also have the you also have the ability to update the location, the assignment of room, and all the other things. So you'll be able, you'll be able to switch between 2D and 3D. So in 3D form, I mean, it's definitely easy to visualize, you know, cross floor um, paths. So what you're seeing here is a corporate campus, and uh, this is definitely also very helpful in you know, large warehouses and uh, manufacturing for manufacturing facilities when you know one uh, worker needs to uh, navigate themselves to a specific um, for example uh, container or a um, product storage area very quickly and some of the other capabilities here also include the mobile application uh, we can um, we can RGS uh, indoors mobile applications which is for the which is for the tenants that you can enable them to do the navigation without actually using a computer. So, in terms of work order management, uh, you will also be able to map out all of the you know, essential work order you have, and then uh, see uh, what basically have a very unified and clear operating view on the different kind of services that needs to be done to keep the facilities. Um, to to keep the facilities facilities running, and then uh, identify potential um, red flags and uh, upcoming uh, maintenance that needs to be done in certain places faster. So this is a way for you know you as a facilities managers to be able to visualize where uh, what's the, what are some of the works that needs to be done very fast instead of actually you know sending people there to to uh, examine and inspect on uh, using a routine. So the data from here can be so the data can be updated either uh, directly by yourself um, through the web map, or we also have mobile applications to have your uh, your staff and workers to update this data directly. The who? I, yeah, I think she is. So, um, which brings me to the second, which brings me to the second, um, second area, which is asset management. So you saw a glimpse of what the dashboard can look like to help you basically have a, a unified view on the, all of the uh, assets that needs to be equipped, that needs to be maintained within the building. So the source of data for that can come from either direct connection to your uh, different system of sensors within the building, for example, uh, air conditioning system. Uh, water sensors, environment sensors, airflow sensors, anything that's IoT enabled um, indoors will be able to ingest those data and then visualize them on a dashboard for you. Um, so this is also quite important during you know COVID-19, which um, in which airflow within a building can play a significant part too. So um, those data, if you have them, can also be used as valuable sources to drive actions to perform social distancing. Yeah. So some of the other um, some of the other uh, analytics capabilities that you can use because over time, uh, what you are accumulating by using an indoor GIS system like this is you will be able to accumulate a lot of, a massive amount of uh, movement pattern data within the building. So you can use some of the techniques such as uh, heat map um, to to perform analysis on the 
hot dwelling spots within the building on each level. Um, normally, this is very um, normally this use case applies to you know for example uh, conventions, exhibitions, or um, or um, facilities or manufacturing facilities where there's a lot of um, or where where um, a significant cluster of uh, uh, high human movement becomes a hazard. But during COVID-19 times, um, this is also a great tool for you to identify over time if there is any specific hotspot in the area that you need to, you know, do some, uh, that you might need to have some uh, precaution or um, activities or uh, planning that needs to be done for the area to um, re related to social distancing. So, um, I would like to show you the second mini demo here. So this is related to uh, the tracking of stuff um, using. So right right now, you, what you are seeing here is a indoor location data through connecting to a, a Cisco Cisco indoor position Cisco Cisco Wi-Fi based indoor positioning system. So um, on the top left, you will be able to see the um, the real time number of how many people is um, dwelling within the confinement of this facility. And then you will be able to switch between different floors to see how many they are within each floor, and then or zooming down to specific rooms to see how many room, how many people is within each area. Um, you have, as you can see here, you have some of the tools that's built in that can basically summarize these data for you to make them either you know circles, heat maps, or uh, aggregate the data into specific parts of the building to make to make to uh, to make better sense of data for you. So over time, uh, you will be able to see um, that basically the movement patterns between um, between different floors, different groups, groups of people, as well as different um, different persona, for example, uh, maintenance crew, um, officers, and uh, the actual workers that need to be moved around the office very very often, and then. For those of you who are familiar with our ArcGIS dashboard, these data can also be directly can can also be directly feed into a dashboard or a you know web customized web app for you to do a lot of different variety in the ter in terms of data visualization as well as um, analytics. So to conclude, what you know uh, it's quite a lot of information that we that we just showed you now. So I'd like to use um, uh, to conclude by mapping out the capabilities for you. So in short, ArcGIS Indoors is a holistic end-to-end -end solution that will enable you to take advantage of your uh, location data feeds as well as any IoT-enabled devices and systems around the building and also your floor plans. So what we do is we take the floor plan, use them as the basis of the maps between floors, and then um, we can either equip you, equip, we can either uh, help you integrate with your indoor location data feeds Made uh, GPS, Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth beacons to um, keep track of the number of people moving around each part of the building, and then uh, also mapping out rooms, assets, and other things that's critical for the building's operations. Um, so some of the things that you've just seen uh, through the demo and um, the explanations include, you know, movement pattern, movement planning, floor plan visualization, uh, preempt, uh, pro. Um, Predictive maintenance of assets, as well as you can, as well as resource scheduling based on location, and then uh, sending them the push notification to their phone to receive new work orders. And um, in the whole, we combine analytics, monitoring, data governance, and infrastructure into one package to make sure, uh, and all operating from the same set of data to ensure that you're working with to ensure that your data is consistent throughout different phases of analytics and uh, enablement and as well as uh, giving you the tools to uh, update the data and do further improvement uh, in a very scalable way. Um, so for those of you who um, who has some experience uh, working with our product, uh, here is um, the architecture map for you. Basically, you are looking uh, so basically ArcGIS Indoors is a, is a enterprise is an enterprise deployment all by itself, meaning that it's going to directly connect to uh, incidents, assets, work orders uh, coming from either yourself or any third-party contractors, um, and the CAD and BIM and the CAD and BIM files is engineered using uh, ArcGIS Pro directly to be used as the basis for the indoor uh, indoors web applications 
which is used for you know the dashboard for asset maintenance as well as navigation tool and route planning tool uh, for both uh, the facilities managers as well as tenants on the on the mobile application so to conclude uh, this is the capabilities um, that indoors will enable you to do um, hopefully uh, what you saw today um, can um, can encourage you to take the next step in action to enable to digitally enable your indoor workspaces and um, thank you for your time i'll leave to zara and uh, we'll also be taking any questions from here great thank you virgil um yeah so now it's time for us to go through the questions that we have and um, again if you still have questions um, please feel free to type them on the space provided right so let me go ahead with the first question here virgil um what types of indoor location data source can arcgis indoors use thank you zara so um to answer that question we are able to work with actually quite a large uh, quite a since arcgis is a very interoperable system we we are able to work with uh, many different types but mainly it comes down to three different types which is gps from a mobile device uh, Wi-Fi, which is what you just saw in the second demo with the Cisco net, Cisco Wi-Fi network, uh, and Bluetooth, which is um, basically a network of positioning beacons, either directly tagged to a uh, a person or a moving asset, uh, or triangulation beacons placed around the office, uh, the office rooms and the corridors to um, uh, to position the individuals and get the count. The main difference between these three is definitely the accuracy. Um, GPS, I mean, in Singapore, is always going to be um, the uh, the less accurate. But in RQS indoors specific scenario, uh, the system is able to actually intelligently switch between the different sources as one become available. So, for example, if your office speaker network doesn't have a a blind spot in a specific area, then um, indoors is going to use Wi-Fi or GPS instead to get the location. All right. Our next question is: ArcGIS indoors a software as a service solution, or is it an enterprise solution? So ArcGIS online, uh, ArcGIS indoors, pardon. Right now, is only available as an enterprise solution. So for those of you, for those of you who's familiar with um, with um, our server platform. Uh, it is basically um, a enterprise setup with um, spatial temporal big data store, and um, which is which enables uh, real-time indoor location tracking that connects to the three different um, data sources that we just described. But uh, it will be available for ArcGIS Online later this year. Oh, I think that's great news. All right, I think this is our last question for um, this afternoon's webinar. What kinds of building information can ArcGIS indoors work with? So I remember um, seeing a couple of items in the previous slides initially, but can you expound more on this information, Virgil, please? Thank you, Zara. Um, so uh, Ashri is a official partner of Autodesk, meaning that um, within ArcGIS Pro, our uh, power user desktop application, you will, we have, uh, off-the-shelf data conversion and transformation tool that can bring in uh, the most common form would be uh, CAD, uh, BIM in the form of Revit. Um, we'll be able to inherit the detailed attribute floor by floor, room by room, from the building uh, from from the from the from the information that's been tagged to the CAD drawing and BIM model, and map them directly into the ArcGIS indoor model format. I see. All right. Um, any more questions coming in from our audience? Okay, I think we are. That was our last question for our webinar. Um, again, we encourage you to fill in the feedback form at the end of um, our webinar for this afternoon. And aside from that, do check out our um, website at sresingapore.com.sg for more details about the SRE Singapore User Conference happening on the 10th of September 2020. So that's a Thursday. And if you have other um, general inquiries regarding um, 
ArcGIS indoors, the different solution showcases that you've seen from previous webinars and um, just other general inquiries, you can send us an email at connect at esrisingapore.com.sg or you can also fill in our general inquiry form, which is found at the link um, here on our website. And if you would like to um, inquire more about our upcoming training sessions, so we are um, currently conducting training sessions back here in our um, office at Alice at Mediapolis um, with proper um, social distancing measures applied, of course, you can check out our training calendar at the link provided here. And as mentioned earlier, we will be uploading a copy of the recording video of this webinar, along with a PDF copy of Virgil's presentation also at our website. And with that, I would like to thank everyone for attending this month's webinar under the GIS Conversation Series. So stay safe and enjoy the rest of your afternoon.